And now, the rest of the story. Harry sat on the roof of the garage, madly thumbing through the book that he had borrowed from the Encino Public Library, a book on home remodeling. Big project Harry was about to tackle to transform the entire garage into a state-of-the-art recording studio. But there were two problems here. One, the garage was not his own. And two, Harry had never done anything like this ever before in his life. But he needed a job, and somehow he had managed to talk himself into this one. Harry's first client ever, the man who wanted the recording studio, was the renowned composer, Sergio Mendez. Good musician. He had simply forgot to ask if Harry knew anything about carpentry. But, of course, the answer would have been no, and Harry would have been out someplace pumping gas instead of hiding up there on the roof with all of those library books on how to renovate a garage. And then, uh uh-oh, footsteps. Harry peered over the edge of the roof, and there was Mr. Mendez in his robe and slippers, smoking a big cigar, obviously having just risen from bed to check on the remodeling project. Harry pulled back and hunkered down. He could not afford to get caught, frantically reading up on the profession for which he had not been trained in the first place. And all at once, as he trembled up there between the shingles and the sky... Every miserable failure in Harry's life came parading past his beleaguered brain. Like all of the times the bullies beat him up after school and he did not fight back, and all of the learning he missed out on because he just plain didn't care, and all of the career choices he might have had if he just hadn't flunked out of college, and suddenly Harry realized that this may be his last chance to do something right. Well, Harry did something right demonstrating a perfectionism of which he had not known he was capable, he completed the famous composer's recording studio and so spectacularly that hearty recommendations promptly followed with only the knowledge he had retrieved from the public library three blocks from the Mendes garage and his newfound ambition. You know, he went on to build and to remodel for James Kahn and Richard Dreyfus, and James Coburn, and Sally Kellerman, and a host of Hollywood VIPs who would soon come to regard Harry as the carpenter to the stars. And his work is still there for all to see. The sprawling porch decks, the sumptuous wooden bookshelves, the splendid carpentry art of a craftsman who came face to face with himself on a garage roof in Encino. You never met the bullied boy or the college dropout or for that matter, the master builder. But you do know the handsome fellow who got discovered in his thirties and who then took all of the self-discipline that he had learned from woodcraft and applied it to characters like Han Solo and Indiana Jones and Richard Kimball, the fugitive, the perfectionist carpenter, turned motion picture actor Harry Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford? (laughs) Harrison Ford. Only now you know the rest of the story. And now the rest of the rest of the story. Behind me is Petra Jordan, the filming location for the climax of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, one of my favorite movies. Harrison Ford has been in several of my favorite films. There's just something unique about Harrison Ford. He has a unique charisma about him. As George Lucas once said, Harrison's not too weird looking and not too good looking. He hits the sweet spot. Harrison Ford was a philosophy and English major at Ripon College, a small Midwestern liberal arts college in Wisconsin. He was the first member of his family to go to college. His parents worked hard to earn the money to send Harrison to college, But Harrison was not a good student. He was depressed. He felt like he didn't fit in. He felt isolated. His grade point average dropped so low that he was in danger of being kicked out of school unless he did something drastic. Harrison went through the course catalog looking for something that he could not fail at. In an interview, Harrison said in jest that he tried to find basket weaving. He looked in the bees and saw that there was no basket weaving class. 
Then he looked in the seas and saw nothing promising there either. Then he came to the D's, drama. Harrison read the first line of the course description. Read plays and discuss them with your classmates. He didn't read the rest, which said the students had to perform in plays. Suddenly, Harrison Ford was on stage with his knees knocking. He was terrified. The first thing he had to learn was how to control his fear, how to not be terrified while performing. After he learned to control his fear, he found that he enjoyed acting. He finally fit in. He had an emotional connection to something. I don't want a real job, Harrison Ford said. Maybe I can be an actor. His father had been a radio actor early on. His grandfather, Harrison's father's father, was a vaudevillian performer, so, so acting wasn't too far of a stretch. They just didn't think he could make a living at it. Harrison knew that to be a successful actor, he had to be on the East Coast or the West Coast. From the flip of a coin, Harrison moved to California. After several years, Harrison got a contract to play in tiny bit parts in television shows at $125 per week. While under contract, he had no choice in what parts he played. The studio said, stand here, say this. When his contract expired, Harrison began doing episodic television. Harrison was also remodeling a house that he and his first wife were able to buy from her parents. When he ran out of money after purchasing supplies and tools, he took a job in which he was to build a rehearsal room for Sir Joe Mendez on his Encino estate. Sir Joe forgot to ask Harrison if he'd ever built anything like this before, and Harrison forgot to tell him that he had not. Harrison built him a 10-track professional recording studio in Sir Joe's backyard, and after that, he had all the carpentry jobs he wanted. This freed Harrison up to not have to take every acting job that came along. He could pick and choose what he wanted to do. He wouldn't take an acting part unless it was better than the previous part. He was slowly climbing the ladder to bigger parts, better billing, and more money. In a period of 15 years, Harrison only worked as an actor five or six times. The first of those was George Lucas's low-budget 1973 classic, American Graffiti. The casting director on the film was a friend of Harrison's and wanted Harrison Ford as one of the lead actors, but he was scripted as a late teenager. The other actors were all in their 20s, but Harrison was in his 30s. That wouldn't work. So when they were casting the villain, Bob Falfa, George Lucas immediately thought of Harrison. And the film was a hit. Harrison Ford was finally in something that was popular. When George Lucas began casting Star Wars, he and his team auditioned a lot of actors. They auditioned the actors in groups of three for the parts of Luke Skywalker, the callow youth, Leia, the beautiful princess, and of course Han Solo, the smart aleck. Of all the groups they auditioned, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, and Harrison Ford had the best chemistry. Harrison thought it was kind of a fairy tale that no one over the age of 15 would be interested in. And boy, was he wrong. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg were in Hawaii when Star Wars came out in theaters. George Lucas had no idea if Star Wars was going to be a hit or a huge failure. Whew. When he learned that it was a hit, he turned to Steven Spielberg and asked what film he was going to do next. Spielberg said he'd been trying to get Albert Broccoli to let him direct a James Bond film, but he kept turning him down. George Lucas said, no, 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 no. I've got something better and told him about his ideas for Indiana Jones. Spielberg loved the idea and they got to work. Once the script for Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark was completed, they began auditions for Indiana Jones. Spielberg imagined an actor like Humphrey Bogart had been 50 years earlier, but who could fit that role? After many auditions, they finally found their Indiana Jones and offered him the part. There was just one problem. He was under contract for a television show and could not get out of it. Their original Indiana Jones was Tom Selleck 
who was working on the TV show Magnum P.I. And you know, it's not that hard to imagine Tom Selleck as Indiana Jones. I would have watched that. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg now had to find a new Indiana Jones. Spielberg and Lucas were watching an early cut of Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back when Steven Spielberg pointed to the screen and said, There's our Indiana Jones! Who? George Lucas asked. Chewbacca? No, Spielberg said. Harrison Ford. He can't be Indiana Jones, Lucas said. He's Han Solo. But Steven Spielberg said that he saw a movie star in waiting. Within minutes, Spielberg had convinced Lucas that Harrison Ford was the right actor for the job. And as Harrison Ford put it, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg came into my life and things got better. You know, there aren't many film characters who change the perception of a profession as much as Indiana Jones. Following the success of Raiders of the Lost Ark and the subsequent films, career paths that were once considered boring, archaeology, history, sociology, geology, geography, they all became popular. I know personally of two archaeologists who chose their profession because of the film character Indiana Jones. Now some archaeologists tease others who go on digs wearing Indiana Jones hats, but I wear mine with pride. The character of Indiana Jones is a positive role model, and we all need more positive role models in our lives. In a lot of ways, Harrison Ford, the carpenter, was a lot like the Indiana Jones character. To learn carpentry, he checked out books from the library. How long has it been since you've been to a library? Seriously, honestly, how long has it been? Unlike a lot of action heroes, Indiana Jones is probably the one that you would most expect to find in a library. Now Harrison Ford has had too many hit films to list here, but the list keeps growing. Do you have a favorite Harrison Ford film? I'm Brad Dyson. Thanks for watching. And now you know the rest of the rest of the story.